Hey, and welcome back to another episode of You Love Comic Books. This is episode 37 of a show that I do on YouTube uh, where I showcase uh, my uh, recent comic book hauls, uh, showcase comic book speculations, uh, stuff from my collection, and uh, in some reviews. I, most of the reviews are usually just on the weekly pull list. Uh, and, um, well, before I start, I just want to thank all my new subscribers. Uh, we're at 144. I would love to get to 150. So, uh, you know, share it with uh, your buddies. Uh, you know, if you found yourself watching this video and you don't subscribe, it's probably because you love comic books. You love comic book speculations, comic book hauls, comic book collecting, and uh, you want to hear reviews of recent comics. So, you know what? Why not subscribe? Give this episode a like. Helps out in the algorithm so that more people can find this video. Uh, if you have any questions what you see in the video, leave a comment. And I will, of course, respond to every comment. I mean, if it's like I like the video, I'll say thanks. <laughs> but if you have any questions in regard to what you see, then uh, it will open up a, uh, a huge conversation. <laughs> so before I start, uh, you will also see some links in the caption of each episode. Uh, the, the links are direct to uh, my Instagram, you love comic books, under the same name. And uh, there you'll find uh, images and stuff from the videos you've seen and stuff from my collection. So if you like the videos, why not become a follower on my Instagram? Also, there's a link to my eBay, which is also under the name You Love Comic Books. The link is there. I sell uh, a lot of toys and trades, uh, some comic books, uh, and uh, some other things on there. So check that out. All right, let's get into the haul. But first thing first, before I do that, uh, this is a, uh, I picked this up. This is my weekly pull list. This is my only issue. I've kind of weaned down my weekly pull list over the years. I've kind of like, kind of want to focus on um, just collecting older books. I feel like, no offense to the new books, they're just very expensive. And if I could find a nice uh, copy of a comic from the 80s, 70s, or 60s, uh, stuff that I've been really trying to get since I've been a kid, I'm going to, you know, I want to focus on that. I do want to, you know, collect the new stuff too, but, you know, you got to make decisions. And there's only so much room. These things do take up room at time, you know, some time. I think I have like, God, I don't even know. Oh, when I we moved here, because we moved recently, I think it were... 50 boxes altogether in comics. Uh, 20 of them were small, the half, and there were over 30 long boxes. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to have to wean this down a little bit. But, uh, yeah, let's get into this. Star Wars Obi-Wan number three. They didn't have uh, the regular copy, but there were a couple of variant editions available. So I grabbed this one. I thought this was the coolest one. Um, I can't tell the signature of the artist on this variant but hey you know it's a clone wars issue of the obi-wan series i think the obi-wan series is only gonna be five issues so we're at the halfway point uh but you know you get a clone trooper you got obi-wan in his clone trooper armor everyone's f favorite jedi kit fistu and uh samuel jackson and uh the comic was fine i'll be honest with you clone wars uh stuff it's not my favorite stuff in the comics i know that's a, a sin uh i think the clone wars is the thing that makes everyone love the whole prequel series don't tell anyone that that's a that's just a truth they love the cartoon that they saw and they kind of mix that with their feelings for the prequel series and uh i mean there's nothing wrong with that you can enjoy it there's, you can enjoy whatever you want you could like that's the great thing about Star Wars. The property's been around for like 50 years. You could love anything from those 50 years. You know, you could come out and say the the Star Wars Christmas special is my favorite. Of course, there's probably something wrong with you, but hey, no judging. Okay, on to the whole. This was from one store I went earlier last week. Dazzler number 10. This is, uh, you know, I wanted to get some of the key issues from the Dazzler series. Obviously, number one being 121 is like an awesome photo cover. Uh, 22 
is a early rogue appearance where she's still a villain. So you want to, you know, you want to get those. Uh, and then this one where I think she becomes a herald of Galactus. It's pretty ridiculous, but I want to grab any of those. And the other one's the thriller issue, the cover with thriller. So happy to grab that. I think I paid four for this. This is a high grade copy. So happy to get this. Captain America 277, Prisoner of Zemo. This is the third or third appearance of the current Baron Zemo, or I guess second full appearance. It's also an awesome cover. I think it's his first uh, cover appearance of the Zemo. I love the old, like this era of uh, Captain America with the Mike Zek covers, like Mike Zek interior art. Uh, if you are aware, he was the one who uh, worked on the original Secret Wars series. Okay, Marvel Triple Action number one. This one they had for 12. This is a reprint series. Uh, I think it'd be, it couldn't hurt to get this. Uh, it's a decent copy. I would say I would give it like a VF if it weren't for this schmegma here. If that's the proper word to use to describe it. I don't know if there's a way to clean that off. Who knows? Maybe a if I ever find someone that can that does, uh, you know, I don't, not restoring old books, but is there a way to remove weird ink stains like that? Because I feel like it's like a texture to it. It could come off. Regardless, I don't know if it's worth messing with this book. It's only a reprint series. This issue, this reprints issue 56 and 57 of Fantastic Four. It might be, fit, it might be three issues. I could be wrong. It says three in one thrill, so... Maybe it was. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you know, I should do my research before I do this. I did look through it and it was, I do have issue 55 Fantastic Four. So it probably was, there's that storyline where Dr. Doom basically gets Silver Surfer's, uh, you know, his surfboard. So happy to have that. Captain Marvel 21. This is like a fine copy. This is uh, issue 21. Gil Kane it does the interior art. The art is very strange in the book. This is pre, this is right before Jim Starlin's epic run in this. I've been kind of eyeing this book. I've been wanting to get this. There's a, you know, I finally completed uh, my, the, what I call the, it's like the Captain Marvel Thanos saga. It starts with 25 and I think it goes to like 34. It ends with 34. And uh, the only other books I really want to get from this series is like number one. But I don't. I'm, I'm not gonna drop a ton of money on that. Uh, 17 and 18. That's when he gets the new costume and the Nega bands. Those are the so 17 and 18 are the next on the list. This one. So that one was 10. This one was 15. And I would say I was I'm blown away that they had this for only 15. I bought this last year for like I think it was 35. But they had a 20% off sale, so it was under 30. But that copy. Like, it's a good copy, but this one is way better. This is a, uh, and it's a newsstand. I mean, from 1980, newsstands aren't that big of a deal. But this is in, like, phenomenal condition. So what is the key significance to this book? This is the second appearance of uh, Sabretooth. His first appearance is Iron Fist 14. And he doesn't come back until this issue, Power Man Iron Fist 66. Um, so it's a couple of years. It's not like a long stretch of time, but like three years. And then, uh, let's see, I've showcased in this, on this, uh, show before, previous, uh, episodes, I got issue 78. That's a weird third appearance of, of Sabretooth, where he's not even really, like, he's in it, but it's, he goes under a different name. Uh, but the other issue, this is the one I want to get, and I haven't gotten yet, uh, 84. I just haven't found one, a good one recently. Uh, it doesn't go for, like, crazy money. That's his fourth appearance. But that's his second cover appearance. But happy to have this. Happy to get this for only 15. This is a better copy than the one I already had. So, you know, sometimes you just gotta... I don't know, like, would I have gotten this copy if I didn't get that other one? You know what I mean? Like, I find myself sometimes getting second issues of stuff I had and get finding them for better prices, like, a year or two later. So, whatever. Okay, this one is Sergeant Fury and Helen Commandos number eight, The Death Ray of Dr. Zemo. So, this one was only ten. 
this isn't pretty good. This is like a very solid condition book. Like the, I don't know if it ever got any water damage or anything like that, but I mean like, this is from 1964. This is like early. I love getting books like this from this era. And I love looking in like their, uh, kind of like in their, uh, what do you call it? Like the Marvel bulletin section or whatever. And they have a checklist of all the comics and you get to look at them. And around this time period, it's like Fantastic Four 18, you know, Avengers 6. A little real early era. And you're like, wow, that's a really expensive uh, checklist of all their books. Now, I'm happy to get this for 10. I think this one was one of those books that was probably at the store and it was just buried in their back issue bin. If they knew about this, I'd probably go for way more. Uh, don't tell them. That's why it's always important to dig through those long boxes. As the guys from Lords of the Long Boxes will say, that's a show on YouTube I like to watch. They always say, dig through those long boxes because there's always stuff in there. Now, you gotta be careful because some stores can be dicks and be like, oh, we're updating the price, but whatever. That's usually pretty rare. Pers uh, and uh, let's edit that. I, didn't, I meant by uh, Richards. You know, I don't want to get it. dinged by YouTube. Not like, you know, whatever. Okay, so this, what is the key significance of this book besides being old, really old and early Sergeant Fury issue? It is the first appearance of Percival Pinkerton, everyone's favorite. <laughs> Also, it's the first appearance, or it's weird. The first appearance of this character is considered Avengers 6. He has a, I guess, a small cameo in Avengers 4, which is the return of Captain America. Baron Heinrich Zemo, who I guess is either the father or grandfather of the current Zemo, which is, uh, you know, if you go back, let's go back to the... Uh, Hall here. This is where that guy is. This is the descendant to this is Zemo. Uh, happy to get this. So this is weird. This this obviously Adventure Six is probably the book you're gonna really want to get, and that's gonna be more expensive. But this isn't bad. This is considered his first full appearance as well. They came out literally like the same month. If you actually open up this book, inside of it is an ad for Avenger 6, so it, it was released at the same time as this. So, hey, you know what? I think that's a pretty good score. And with Zemo being, uh, you know, they just announced a Thunderbolts movie, so I'm happy to get this. And I think the, those Zemo keys are become bigger and bigger, you know, as time goes on. And, you know, he was a very well-liked character in Falcon Winter Soldier series that was on Disney+. Plus. Like, he was the standout. And there's that famous gif of him dancing at the party, so. All right, this one was a good one. This is a smaller haul, so this video is going to be quick. I'm almost done. Avengers, New Avengers, 33. Look at that. This is such an amazing cover. I love this. I, I didn't even know about this issue until like a couple months ago. I wasn't buying Avengers at this time. But this is, this is the issue that leads right up into the uh, Secret War series. Right, the uh, guy, I totally forgot his name. <laughs> Hicks? Is that his name? <laughs> The writer, uh, yeah, Hickman, duh, it's right there. So this issue, this is, there's some, well, besides being an amazing cover and leading right into that storyline where Dr. Doom basically shapes, reshapes reality, this issue kind of leads to that. This sets it up. This is the first mentioning, and I could be wrong, could be wrong, you can leave this in the comment section, I looked this up. It's the first mentioning of incursions that got mentioned in Dr. Strange, uh, incur the whole Secret Wars, the newer Secret Wars series that came out in 2015, had to do with incursions. I don't have a textbook definition of that word in front of me, but it was had something to do with realities, I guess, and things coming together. It was mentioned in the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness with the uh, Illuminati characters. So regardless, this is I think this is going to be a hot book. I think people are going to be looking for this one. I'm like I said, I never seen this anywhere. So it's like one of those, it's like a, one of those books that just get picked up immediately. The store had them. Um, I got the, I took a, I took the better copy. <laughs> uh, happy to have this and again. It's just such a great cover. I mean, I don't know if like I'm getting a glare. Let's see if I can yeah, zoom in a little bit. Oh, now you're picking up on my my hand and my and this thing that's holding up the camera. Well. <laughs> so let me just pull it in real quick. Such a good cover. Let's see if I can. All right. Well, 
can't uh, can't fight reflections right now. Okay, last three. This was at a different store. I went to here today. Micronauts number one. Been wanting to get this one for a while. Not really like a Micronauts fan. I really just want this. I mean, I love this cover. I love this whole like Darth Vader looking villain. This is a Dave Cockrum cover. Mike Golden does the interior artwork. It's just a cool issue. I think it's a fun book to have in your collection. Happy to have it. So in a previous episode, I had Iron Man 17, which is the first appearance of um, Madame Mask. This is your, her second appearance, and this is her first cover appearance. So kind of wanted to get that. It's a decent copy. I mean, it's got a little bit of ding here and a little bit of a little staining there. But overall, really nice copy for a 15 cent book. And then last book, I want to show you this. Now, I've actually showed this in a previous episode, in a previous episode of You Love Comic Books. This is, and anytime I see this in the store, I'm going to grab it. Robotech Sentinels, Robotech 2, The Sentinels. Now, what is the key significance to this book? Well, it's the Robotech, and it stars this lady's boobies. Actually, I'm just kidding. This is that is not a reason why I bought this book. I could care less about. No offense to Robotech fans, uh, you could all enjoy what you want. It's because of this ad for Australia's own X Men: The Southern Squadron. Actually, I'm just kidding. This is the reason why you want this book. And this is okay. Here we go. This is the first mentioning of Spawn. This predates Malibu Sun. This ad right in the center. This is why you want this book. 1991. I think this comes out. This is, yep, coming May of 92. This is like almost a year before. That's why I got this book. And every time I see it, I'm going to grab it. So basically I was going, <laughs> I was going through it. I'd been in the store forever. I never noticed he had these whole other section in the back and he had manga, the guy. And, uh, you know, he, uh, he doesn't really price his books, but he does a good, like some books... A price some aren't but he's reasonable you know i found some like gems there he's been re he's pretty reasonable when he does price the book so i don't mind that that like game i don't mind it but when i showed that to him he was like he, i go there enough he knows what books i buy he's like wait why is this guy getting robotech too <laughs> and i showed it to him and he was like cracking up he's uh he's like whoa this is a big book he only charged me 15, which is fine though, because this is like a, this is like a almost perfect copy. There's like one slight spine tick on the back. Now I have this book already, got it in a store last year for like four, but that book has tons of spine ticks. This one is like perfect. It's like never read. And uh, he was like, you know, he's like, wow, this book goes for like 150, it could go for 200, but he didn't see any recent sales for it. So he only charged me 15, which was cool. I don't mind that. I'll pay 15 on a really nice condition copy of this. I won't pay more than that. Uh, will this book amount to anything? Uh, I think, you know, with comic collecting and goes in waves, I think there was like a weird preview craze where people were going back, buying preview, uh, preview books, like stuff that showed uh, pre before the character came out. Like people wanted, it, it started kind of with that Marvel previews with Miles Morales, that ridiculous one, supposedly like a 9.8 went for like eight to 10 grand. And I think that just made people go crazy and looking for preview stuff. But one fans are nuts. Happy to have this. I'm gonna sit on this one for a while. I'm gonna wait, you know? Tom McFarlane keeps saying he's gonna make a Spawn movie. Cause I don't, I think that at this point, that's like, uh, what are they call it? Boy, Boy Who Cried Wolf. He's been talking about this movie now for like, probably since the last one came out in 96 or 97. 97. Uh, and, uh, it'll probably never happen. Who knows? But Spawn is a, like, people who love Spawn are huge fanatics. I'm going to hold on to this one and the other copy I have. Uh, if you ever see this in a store, save one for me. Just send it to me. Uh, I will corner the market on this book. I'm just kidding. Happy to have this. Like I said, I didn't even think he would have it, but he had a whole ton of Robotex. And, uh, yeah, this is, a. Uh, I think it's a cool find. So, yeah, not a bad haul, you know? It's a smaller one this week, but, you know, I thought my video would be shorter. I'm at, almost at 20 minutes, but I guess I just love to talk so much. And my apologies to you on that.
Or maybe you, you like that. Maybe you want to hear me talk. That's fine. So if you do like that and you do want to hear me talk, why not subscribe to You Love Comic Books, you know? Uh, smash that subscribe button. S whoop, smash that like button. You know? Uh, give it a follow. Leave a comment. Check out my links. Whoa, hey, check out the links in my bio. For, I mean, in the captions for my Instagram, You Love Comic Books, and my eBay, You Love Comic Books. All right, well, you're going to see a... Uh, uh, previous episode there, previous episode there, and a subscription button right there. All right, thank you, and have a good one. Later. Bye.